In history past, Myanmar has always been heralded for its enviable strategic location. 4,000 kilometers of coastline on the Bay of Bengal, bordered by five countries, including China, India, and Thailand. Blessed with abundant resources, such as gemstones, tin, tungsten, oil, lead, rare earths, silver and gold. Holding 60% of the world's teak forest and 20 million acres of paddy fields that once made it the world's biggest exporter of rice. With the water of five rivers sourced from within its borders, the magnitude of the country's resources is staggering to behold. In 1948, the year of independence, the country was prosperous, with an educated population, rule of law, and an assured future as a leading nation of Asia. A Burmese was the first Asian Secretary General of the United Nations, serving for a decade. But in 1962, a bright future evaporated when a new government gained power. The result was 50 years of economic mismanagement. Myanmar was isolated from the outside world and sanctioned by the West. It is interesting to wonder how the country would have developed had it not closed its doors. Would it surpass the wealth and advances of less resource-rich neighbors today? In 2010, the military government led by President Ten Sen became civilian. A quiet, sincere man, Ten Sen made bold reforms which were once unthinkable, such as rewriting labor laws and lifting censorship, encouraging Aung San Suu Kyi to re-engage in the political process was for many the highlight of his progressive policies and the lady's subsequent election to a seat in Parliament was the turning point in the country's global reconciliation. The lifting of US and EU sanctions exposed Myanmar to the world. And in a country that has had minimal foreign investment, the economy is a blank canvas. The country's natural wealth is the base on which the economy will be built. Oil, gas, hydroelectric power, agriculture, minerals, telecoms and banking are all industries transforming to service this change. Consumer products will be highly sought after by an emerging middle class. From cars to houses and from shampoo to fast food. Of all these, real estate is the sector that traditionally performs first when an economy develops rapidly. Myanmar today with a young and hard-working population of 60 million, is the second largest country in Southeast Asia and has the potential to become the economic powerhouse it once promised to be. The SBA Group is a leading Myanmar conglomerate led by Serge Pun. Born in Myanmar, at the age of 11, Serge's family left the country and settled in China. After moving to Hong Kong as a young man, he worked his way up the property industry until he founded SBA, a syndicated real estate developer. Notable developments included Stuart Terrace on the Hong Kong Peak and Village Gardens in Kowloon. The company quickly grew and opened in China, Thailand and Taiwan. SBA built the Sands River Golf Club in Shenzhen and Abdul Rahim Place in Bangkok. By 1992, Serge and his family returned to their homeland. I came back, admittedly, with a deep sense of curiosity. During that trip, I think a few things happened. One was that I went back to my old school. I walked the streets where I played football as a young boy. I went to the lake where we used to swim after school and fish. Um, I went back to the house I was born in. And surprisingly, there was a very strong affinity, a lure calling you back. And the country needed a lot of help in investments, not only capital, but technology, expertise. 
So with the encouragement of the government, I came back, or I went back, and started SPA in 1992. SPA's first venture was FMI City, a 500-acre real estate development nine miles from downtown Yangon. Serge's vision was to house the capital's burgeoning middle classes. SBA in the 90s grew rapidly, building out to 40 operating companies in a range of sectors. The first Myanmar investment company, the group's flagship business and one of the country's best-known corporate brands. With a public shareholder base of over 3,500, run through the company's OTC share trading office. Yoma Bank, with 41 branches across the country. A state-of-the-art private hospital. Automobile dealerships with partners Hino and Suzuki. The Grand Miata, the capital's leading service departments. FMI Center, the first office block in Yangon and the group's headquarters. Corporate social responsibility is at the core of what SBA and its employees stand for. You have to give back to society what you have gained from it. In the case of Cyclone Nagis, when it hit Myanmar in 2008, we told all our employees that doing relief work and going out there to really save lives it's not an option, it's a responsibility. So we effectively call in all our managers, say you can stop your business for the next month, or you can give it to your second in line to run it, but you have to come up and be a volunteer. But all the managers volunteer, we mobilize a thousand people. Within three days, we were in the disaster areas. Our hospital played a major role in providing medical relief uh, and so forth. And we did that for a good three months. The business can suffer, doesn't matter. People are dying, we gotta go. SBA today focuses on six strategic business lines. Financial services, real estate, manufacturing, services, automobiles, and agriculture. These sectors are well placed to benefit from Myanmar's unstoppable change. I was working at Goldman Sachs for 12 years and I was actually very happy there. Um, but I went to Myanmar March 2012. I saw a genuine change in the country. I saw people being a lot more optimistic about their future. I saw there was a genuine political movement. And more importantly, I just felt like it's the start of a long road to recovery for the country. It holds joint venture agreements with internationally renowned companies such as Mitsubishi, Sumitomo, CP Group and Jepson and & Jessen. And its ambition is to be the leading Myanmar diversified conglomerate. My deepest wish would be for SP to be around many, many years after I'm gone, that it be managed by professionals, that it will offer employment, livelihood for thousands of people, but always doing things for the betterment of the people and the country. I think what you leave behind is the good deeds you do and not the money you make. In 2006, SPA established an international arm and listed many of its real estate assets as Yoma Strategic Holdings in Singapore. Yoma trades as part of the SPA group, but with an independent board and subject to the international standards of the Singapore Stock Exchange. The company is led by British CEO Andrew Rickards, who joined after a 20-year career in Asian corporate finance and senior positions with Goldman Sachs and Rothschild. I joined Yoma because having decided that Myanmar was where I wanted to be, I found there was very few business groups that carried on business in the manner that the SPA group Yoma carries it on. 
So Yoma's main business today is real estate. It accounts for about 90% plus of our bottom line. We are in agriculture and automobile distribution as well. And we believe over the medium term, those two businesses will contribute a greater portion of the income. Yoma's real estate holdings comprise a share of FMI City and the Punline Golf Estate, a residential development for 800 families surrounding an 18-hole Gary Player designed course. The estate is the premier housing development in Myanmar, featuring a private golf country club, sports centre and spa. Yoma also holds a majority share of Tanling Star City, a development of apartments, homes and shopping for 25,000 residents. Star City has set the standard for residential development in Myanmar. Yoma has also a proposed landmark development, which will occupy 10 acres of land located in the middle of downtown Yangon. It will be an iconic, 2 million square feet gross floor area, mixed-use development comprising residential, retail, hospitality and commercial assets. Together with its existing developments, this forms another important step in cementing Yoma's position as a leading real estate developer in Myanmar. Yoma has also ventured into agriculture with the 100,000 acre Moor Tin Estate, it will play an important role in re-establishing Myanmar's position as a key exporter of foodstuffs. In its automobiles division, the company enjoys sole rights to Dongfeng truck distribution. And Yoma has ventured into retail in a joint venture to develop department stores with Parkson Group. Going forward beyond that, there are three more business areas that the group is in that Yoma is not in. That is banking, hospitality, and manufacturing. So in terms of future expansion we will look at those areas first and then together with our sister group, the SBA group, look at new business areas that neither Yoma nor SBA are in today. The partnership between Yoma and SBA is vitally important. SBA's focus on strategically important sectors in a burgeoning economy will shape the success of the group in the years to come. Myanmar has always been considered the golden land. And SPA is the bridge to that golden land. <laughs>